Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, 100 years after the Treaty of Lausanne, news from Western Armenia, Freedom House calls on Baku, lawyers for Randings family appeal to Constitutional Court, First Armenian Pavilion opens in China. Gora Bazian was born on April 29, 2001 in the village of Lernapat in the Lori area region. In 2019, he joined the service in Jarakan, acquiring the trade of scout and then also machine gunner. Gora Bazian's sister, Gohari Kabazian, recounts, Gor called us on the morning of September 27. He said, I call to hear your voices. I may not be able to call. A fight has started here. I'll call as soon as I fit in. The last call was on October 2. My brother was very worried. The enemy had blown up the Jeraka military unit and there were 400 conscripts inside. He also asked me to call the classmate parents to see if they had any news of the boy, as the classmate was from that damned military unit. Gore fought on the front line from the very first day of the war and we haven't heard from him since October 2. After 40 days without news, the body was handed over to us for forensic examination on November 21, but according to our information, he died on October 4. Gore are Marshal Luis Abazian died on October 4 without leaving the fighting position and his comrades in arms. The question of language, or more precisely linguistic assimilation, was on the agenda of nationalist forces from the very first years of the foundation of the Turkish state. Thus, in 1925, propaganda advertisements were published in Turkish newspapers, where alongside calls to buy Turkish products to use Turkish stores, it was clearly stated, don't answer anyone who doesn't speak Turkish. In 1926, the question of the use of the languages other than Turkish in the Turkish state was hotly debated at the Turkish Hearts Conference where racist aggressive speeches and specific proposals were made. It's worth noting that the Turkish authorities have actively included nationalist yas in the campaign of linguistic persecution against other nations and Christian minorities in particular. Incidentally, the use of yas in carrying out nationalist actions and persecutions would become traditional and become one of the most frequently used methods by the Turkish state. As Rafat Bali, an in-depth expert on various national minority problems in Turkey, noted in 1928. On January 13, at the annual conference of the Student Council of Constantinople, the university's faculty of law, the issues of spreading the Turkish language and increasing the level of Turkish speakers in the country were discussed, and the slogan Compatriots Speak Turkish was adopted, which would become the name of the decades-long policy of persecution. Following the proclamation of the slogan, a chain of xenophobic actions began targeting Armenians. In January 1928, in neighborhoods where Armenians lived, in public places and on public transport, the slogan Compatriots Speak Turkish was posted, followed by groups of young nationalists strolling through neighborhoods on public transport and on boats, reprimanding those who did not. This event took place mainly in Constantinople, but was also used in other cities where representatives of national minorities were still preserved. For example, the Jews living in Edirne and in Izmir. For Armenia, Lausanne was synonymous with an extra slap in the face, this piece of paper, and the determination to take justice into their own hands. In 1923, the peace treaty concluded between Kemalist Turkey and the Allies in the capital of the canton of Wood ended with a declaration of universal amnesty appended to the main text. The crimes committed by all parties between 1914 and 1922 would not be punished. They are all doomed to oblivion, and in Europe, despite the demands of the exiled Armenians of Western Armenia, the debate over a possible judicial ruling on the genocide abruptly faded the Armenian question, being nipped in the bud. But do crimes against humanity have a set of limitations? asks Armenian historian Ruben Safrastian. The unofficial Armenian delegation headed by Pogos Nubar in Lausanne included his cousin diplomat Ashak Safrastian. The Armenian diplomats who had come from recognition of his case and application of the provisions of the Treaty of Sever were not allowed to vote. Powerless, they could only follow the discussions in neutral language between Turkey representatives and the allies who, until July 17, 1923, the date of the last meeting, led them to believe in a possible return. In the end, the Armenians were also forgotten. 
A forest fire broke out in the area surrounding the village of Kabasakal in the Dulkadiroglu district of Maraj province. A large number of firefighters and vehicles arrived on the scene to extinguish the blaze. To date, around 30 hectares of forest areas has been damaged. Fire extinguishing work in continuing both by air and land, but wind is contributing to the fire's strongest spread. Due to the fire threatening homes, firefighters have evacuated several people. A 5.5 magnitude earthquake was the recorded in the Cis region of Cilicia. The earthquake occurred on the morning of June 25 at around 8.44. Underground tremors were recorded at a depth of 11-pound 27 km. The earthquake was also felt in the neighboring regions of Cis. According to the people of Cilicia, work is in progress. According to preliminary reports, there were no casualties, but several cattle pens and the half-destroyed buildings were damaged, and cracks appeared in some workplaces. The tremors caused panic among the population. People took to the streets in alarm. Residents of Cilicia reported that, as a result of a panic, two local residents left their building. Around three aftershocks were recorded over the next hour. Freedom House called on Baku to allow the International Committee of the Red Cross to provide the necessary humanitarian aid to Artsakh. On Twitter, the organization also called on Baku to work immediately to ensure free movement by opening the Berzo Road and guaranteeing the free movement of people, vehicles and goods. The deteriorating humanitarian situation in the region has deprived the civilian population of vital medicines and basic necessities. We call on democratic governments to put pressure on Baku to put an end to the deliberate starvation of innocent civilians, says the statement. The ICRC statement was distributed yesterday by the ICRC's sister organization. The International Committee of the Red Cross warned yesterday that, despite persistent efforts, it is currently unable to deliver humanitarian aid to Artsakh, either via Berzor or other routes, including Agna. The international organization documented that the population of Artsakh is facing a shortage of vital medicines, essential items, including infant formula, and recall that the last time the organization was allowed to deliver essential medical supplies and food products to Artsakh was a few weeks ago. Baku, in response, urged the ICRC to refrain from abusing the political objectives of this mandate. The government of Western Armenia has repeatedly referred to the brutal policy of Baku, which, in defiance of all international norms, pursues the genocidal and conquering policy dictated by its elder brother, Turkey. We call on international structures to follow the example of Western Armenia and force Baku to submit the international legal standards by prosecuting Baku for the crimes it has committed and is committing, which is not a political but a legal condemnation. Lawyers for the family of Haran Ding have appealed to the Constitutional Court for violation of the right to life and violation of the right to know the truth after their demands in the Haran Ding murder case were not met in the Court of Cassation. Lawyers have submitted a wide-ranging petition to Constitutional Court. The lawyers stated in the petition, in the content of the case that is the subject of the petition and for the reasons listed in this petition, it is established that official documents that could have revealed the patterns and protocols of the murder have been falsified, and the required information has been non transmitted to the court by public institutions. The applicant's request to gather evidence and hear the officials was not even heard in court. Both the public and the victims and their families have the right to know the truth, the right to be informed of the circumstances of human rights violations and the fate, death, or disappearance of victims is not subject to a state of limitations. The first Eastern Armenia Pavilion has been inaugurated at the International Conference Center in Qingdao, China. From now on, Armenians' history and culture, as well as information on the tourism and business sectors, will be constantly presented in the center. In the near future, our plans are to showcase Armenians' tourist potential, innovative developments, and the technology and IT sector in the pavilion, said Haid Markarian, Executive Director of the RA Ministry of Economics National Center for Innovations and Entrepreneurship adding that now manufacturers can apply to the center to enter the Chinese market and use this platform to make new connections. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Oh,
Ay, hijo.